Good morning. Welcome to No Strings Attached Street Ministry. Today I'm going to take you along. This video might actually end up being pretty long, but I hope you all watch it all the way through. But um, I'm going to give you a sort of what it is to a day in the life or a day in the morning routine of Jim the Prayer Van. And sort of how we get started in the morning and, and do... Um, something to set our mind and our heart and our soul straight to where we can walk the rest of the day um, blessing others putting a smile on other people's faces and um, just uplifting the world this is a little bit different of a video that I normally would would make but I wanted to sort of incorporate a few requests that I've had but also show a little bit more intimately about what my life is and how I deal with things in the mornings. So first thing you do is while you're sitting around and getting prepared, you show you, first thing we do is we start our coffee, right? So first we put our water in, turn our inverter on, and start our pot, start our pot of coffee to, to start boiling. So anyway, we'll let that heat up while we're talking about a few things here. The first thing to get started in the morning. So we'll let that go. Uh, first thing I do is I get my Bible. And I go into reading my devotions. And, uh, and then I usually go to verses that the Lord sort of leads to me, the Spirit leads to me to go to, to just sort of reflect on that day if my devotions doesn't do that. But um, today I just want to say that, you know, this morning I just, every morning I, I always feel at sunrise, I feel this presence that just sort of holds me and comforts me and proves to me that there is a God. And that's when I have my conversations with God. That's when I deep in spirit and in, in prayer and meditation and just sort of reflecting on who I am and why I'm here and what I'm supposed to do in life. But um, this morning, I wanted to bring back a, uh, a verse for you or a passage for you that is pretty much well known. But a lot of people, I wonder if they really even understand what it says. So I'm going to read this to you. It's, uh, Psalms 23 it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside the still waters. And he restores my soul. That's why he does this, and that's why nature is so important to us, to be able to allow God to restore our soul every morning. That's why I feel it's very important to do in the mornings. That way you can start your day off right. It says, He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So, Even though I walk through a valley of the shadow of death, which is pretty much every day in facing all the demons in your life, says, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. What this means is people will, will try to destroy you, will try to bring you down, but the Lord will actually prepare a table right in front of you to show his righteousness to you, to uphold you in that time of need. And uh, they'll be very aware of what they've done, trust me. But ours is just to have faith and to believe in God and to allow and partake of that, of that table. Um, <clears throat> you anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. So as your you know, people bless you and, and your cup is being poured into blessings, make sure your hands are open, you know, so, and never grab onto something so tight you don't want to let go because... When your hands are full, you can't receive any more blessings. So instead of bringing a, a teacup or a little small thimble, you know, to your, you know, to your blessings and allowing God fill that up and overflow, bring a five-gallon bucket if you have to, you know, and let it flow out. And as it comes in, let it flow out to others. That's why I do what I do for strangers, just total strangers. I'll do this for. 
but um, this is how I this is how I've always uh, you know received this message uh, surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever amen but now on another note that I wanted to always believe about your hands and answers of prayer because I am a ball about prayer and this is what I teach mostly about people for prayer and I teach them how to make sure that they go into prayer with the with a humble heart and clean hands and what I mean by clean hands is going out and if you know if you have something evil or something against your brother or sister then you need to go and ask for forgiveness and then come to God with clean hands you know or pray with clean hands and it's so important that you pray with a humble heart and a clean hands. If you do that, your prayers will always be answered. Trust me, I believe that a thousand percent. Just in the next area down below that, it even sort of tells us that. He says, uh, the earth is the Lord's, everything in it. Let's see, where was I at here? Um, who may ascend the hill of the Lord? He says, who of you may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? These are questions that are asked. And then his answer is, he, that, he who has clean hands and pure heart, who does not lift up his soul in a, to an idol, or swear by its faults, by what is false, he will receive blessings from the Lord and vindication from God his Savior. So, God will vindicate your words and your actions as long as you do it from clean hands, humble heart, and you're not worshiping idols. So let that sort of, you know, work with your spirit today and and sort of teach you to be humble. Well, our water turned off. And uh, so what we're going to do is I'm tired of making the videos only about head-talking videos out in a out in a um and right here in the front seat of my van and i do actually get out of my bed trust me i really do so we're gonna do something a little bit different today i got a bowl i got my other normal you know routines and everything all right here packaged up in a little walmart bag and so we're at a nice little park this morning so what I want to do, sorry about that, I had an emergency phone call come in for one of my service technicians, I need to help him out there for a second, but anyway, we're going to go on and um, head on that way and continue on with our, our morning routine. So. Stand with me. Hope I don't make you sick here. We'll, uh, I want to do it. Usually do everything in the van, but it's a beautiful little park here. So I wanted to sort of bring you out here. They got a nice little pavilion out here. I think that'll give us some more room and give you a little bit more of a A better scenery background anyway <laughs> but um yeah just remember spend your time wisely and cherish every moment that you have as that makes a major difference in how your day starts off so all right, we're inside this little pavilion here. What I'll do is we'll just set up. So I get everything right there. We'll see how that works. Oop. 
try to give you a little bit better of a view here. Sorry about that. So anyway, first thing we do is we start out with our coffee, right? You know, a lot of people go through all kinds of different ways and techniques of making coffee and van life is not that, it's not that tough, it's not hard. Try to make it as easy as you can. You know, they use these big old French presses and coffee pots and boil water and you name it, it's all crap. Like I said, you saw my little electric kettle, if not like back in the, in the last few videos. You'll see where I'm uh, displaying this here. I think it's really a cool thing. This is my little Bubba mug. So uh, what I do, I just use the Maxwell light. Yeah, I'm trying to cut back on my coffee. So I have to use the light, you know, to, to do it. Have you ever all ever seen these? This is a tea filter. These are filters that you buy that you can put your own herbs and your own teas in. And that's what I found to be the easiest and the less mess and no cleanup. When you get done, you can just toss it out. It's biodegradable, everything. So I just sort of open it up and take my little scooper like this. Now I'll just dump three of these scoops down in here, big heaping scoops. And this is a one teaspoon, so it's basically three teaspoons of coffee is what I use in there. You see that? <laughs> I'm going to take my coffee or my water, and I'm pouring my hot water into my bubble mug. And I take this here. I take this here, I have to pour my mud water in there. And I take this bag and I just lay it in there and let it seep. And what I do is I take the top, I lay it over the top like that. And I just sort of screw my lid off of that for a few seconds. And I'll set that over off to the side and let it seep there for a while. And it basically brews itself. And like I said, for cleaning the coffee and everything else. Now these are wet wipes, I'm sure. Once you get into van life, you're gonna, this is going to be your best buddy, trust me. You need to wipe all your little pits and cracks and anything else you need to do. Even wipe your hind end with it. They do a great job. Keep you as clean as possible. But to use these here, pretty much just to... Keep yourself as clean as you can. And in the morning, always take a few seconds just to sort of clean yourself up, you know. Now today is one of those days that I hate it with a passion, but this is my showering day or my shaving day. So I take a little bit of my hot water that I boil and I put in a little small bowl. And the reason that I do that is to clean my razor blade. Now let's talk about razor blades for a second. Now this is one for girls they use for the legs, but I, if I was going to use one of them, this is what I would use. And the reason is because it seems to cut my hard coarse beard better. But the worst thing I hate about these things, number one, they're expensive. These are not cheap. Especially if you know if you use them like me I use this razor here one time it's done I got to toss it in the garbage and go on trust me it's just how rough my face is but uh, and the biggest thing is is you see the little cracks in the ends of the blade that's why I like the girls is because they're opened up a, you know a lot a lot better so I can actually get maybe two shades out of this one here but those cracks in between the blades on men's razors are really really thin and when you shave you get all the the gunk the slime you know the skin the little hairs everything down inside of it and it's almost impossible to clean 
I mean, literally, it's almost impossible to clean it. And that's what ruins my blades for me, you know, is basically that. Now, if it's not cleanable, I don't have no clue. I mean, I've tried cleaning with a toothbrush. I've done everything I could try to clean it up and reuse it, but it just never seemed to work out well. <coughs> so, <coughs> I go back to the old old school days, you know, of, you know, the days, you know, of Grandpa, you know. And back then they had these razor blades. This was a single edge, double, you know, double edged, but single blade. They used just a simple little blade, single blade, you know, single blade. And um, this is what I would recommend any man to shave with. And you can open it up even in the halfway through the process. You can, if it gets time to clean it, I just sort of crack mine a little bit open it up, slosh around the water a little bit, and it'll actually self-clean itself really, really well. Shake it off, and I can tighten it back down. I've got two sides of shave with and stay clean, you know. That way, if one starts to clog up, I just flip it over and continue on. But uh, that's how I would shave. And uh, if you look at these here, these here are, like I said, expensive. You're probably talking $10, $12 a pack. And they're they're useless, and and men's razors are crazy expensive. You know that, like the Schick and the you know the ones that you would throw away, the double edge and triple edge blades. They're just so expensive you can't afford to even use them. So what I'd recommend is you going back to the old style. Remember, I think they put more blades in there so it would clog up, so they can charge you more money per blade. So don't waste your money on that. You know, don't you know you're just wasting time and money. But go back to old school sometimes. Sometimes old school's better, you know, than what the new school stuff is, you know. Yeah, I know they show the things about it. Pools, the first blade pulls in it, the second blade cuts it and make it smoother. Yeah, bull crap. You know, not in my not in my case it don't. And mine is this here. This is the most important tool I have because I can literally grow a beard in three days. I mean, that's how bad. I get five o'clock shadow, like most people around five o'clock after shaving first thing in the morning. Well, my, my five o'clock shadow is at nine, about 10 o'clock in the morning. I mean, that's how ridiculous this is. This here is two days, literally less than 48 hours. And you see how it's basically a, a, a beard already. So what I suggest is getting one of these. This one here I like the best because I don't have to have power. It's battery operated. It does a great job. It's got one of the adjustable handles so I can bring it down, cut it and trim it size. I can go completely flat. First thing I do is go through and I trim my face. And now trim it all the way down. Trim underneath. And then I, after that, I take and uh, decide if I want to thin this or trim it or whatever. I'm gonna keep it cleaned up. I'll lower this all the way out to the, the highest extension. And then, you know, I'll usually use it like that. Now, if I want to really thin it out and be even more clean shaved, because I usually, this is almost too long for me. I always like the, the new beard look, you know, the one that, you know, it's just a newer beard. I think it's nicer looking. Of course, I'm not trying to attract anybody because I'm just an old fart, probably no one wants me anyway, so. 
in the old days, we just try to make it as doable as possible. So I run this all the way, and while it's down, you know, to a close shave, I'll go in here and I'll trim out the ear hairs. You know, as you get older, you start getting hair growing places that you don't want it to grow. I trim out my nose. <clears throat> I use it just to keep my blade clean. I just got a little towel here that I use. So I'll clean this all out. And then if I want to trim it, I'll go and trim it today to show you what I do. But I run this all the way down, stick it straight out. And I just comb through what I have. And that brings it down to a, a manageable look. Now, I'm not using a mirror today because I don't, I didn't I forgot to grab it, so I'm just using the camera here to see in. But anyway, that gives you more of an idea of how I trim my beard. And yeah, even my eyebrows get long, so what I'll do is I'll leave it still out, hold it sideways, and I'll just brush across my eyebrow, and that keeps it down to where it's not, you know, it's pretty manageable for me. I hate big bushy eyebrows. But, uh, so then, after I shave there, I just dust it, get it all off, and uh, use one of my wet wipes. Now, I don't use, um, I don't use shaving cream or anything like that. I might put maybe a drop of soap sometimes into my water, but usually I'll just a little dampen the the white wipe and go over the beard and the hot water will uh, sort of help it stand up, you know, where I can shave. And then as I shave on my beard, Like I said, so you can see how clean that got just a little bit. I mean, it cleans it up pretty good because it loosens that blade up on that guide to where it actually cleans it really well and it keeps it really well. So. Like I said, I can't really see that well here on the 
I'm just going by memory. I'll probably have to touch it up anyway. But I wanted to give you an idea of what it took to do your grooming while you're out on the road. It's not a big deal. It's something that you can take care of and still pay, you know, stay presentable. You don't have to stay filthy. I mean, I have a uh, gym membership at uh, Planet Fitness, so I can go take a shower anytime I want. One, sometimes two a day if I wanted to, you know. But uh, I don't really mess with it too much in shaving. And I'll tell you why is because I end up having to shave so often anyway. I mean, if I shaved every day, I'd end up breaking out, and it just it just very uncomfortable. Now I've used a, I've had a beard pretty much my whole life. I mean, I think I've only had it off three times in since I've been able to grow one. I was able to grow a full beard when I was uh, 13 years old. So you know, I mean, I actually had a job where I was working with my father, and uh, so the customers wouldn't, you know, disrespect me and try to rip me off for what kind of work that I did. I ran service on appliances. So um, you know, instead of taking, you know, they would take advantage of me because of my age. So I started to grow a beard and that seemed to stop that. So what we did is, you know, if you, as long as I actually had to go and get a special note to my principal so I would be able to keep my beard because they always wanted me to shave it. You know, cut that scruff off your face. You know how it goes. That's the way it always was. And that's the way, it, you know, even as in, you know, some grocery stores, things like that for regular jobs, you know, people don't let you have beards, you know, because they want you clean shaven. But honestly, this looks great. There's nothing wrong if I keep it like this right here every day or even every two days. How much, I mean, this is just as nice as someone's clean shaven, so I sort of, I guess I'm just a rebel at that point, you know, to, <laughs> to see what's going on. But anyway, but like I said, you know, you get, you know, if you go and you use these blades, you can buy one little package like this right here. It's like six bucks, maybe. But with that, with that razor, I can shave with that blade probably 10 times or 15 times before I actually have to replace it. That's how well they last. And it's just a single blade. And you can buy one of these, they'll last you almost a year, you know, at least a year, you know, with these little boxes. There's probably like 10 in there maybe, you know. But, um, and I change it when I want to. I don't, I don't have it pulling on my face hard. I mean, if it starts to pull and cut and nick and all this, shit. Throw it in the garbage. I don't care if it's just been used once. But the biggest thing about it, you know, is how people, you know, they really have a hard time. And it's all consumerism. They, they want you to spend all that money, you know. You know and keep you, keep you broke and poor. Well, that's sort of what I like about the van movement is because it doesn't keep you broke anymore. You know, you're allowed to, you learn to overcome and adapt and, and do away with the, the nonsense of consumerism. You know, you don't need all the stuff that the world says you need, trust me. And believe me, I would rather spend more time like this, enjoying my day, and have less time having to work 100 hours a week just to be able to pay a, a mortgage or a rent, you know, or you know, a power bill of $300. So, that's sort of how I try to instruct you how to do that, and that's why I wanted to show you this here. But anyway, um, let's check our coffee and see how that turned out. How about that? So we're gonna set you back a little bit here. I'm gonna push you down here. So we had our coffee seeping, right? And uh, oh yeah, it's. Turns out just as nice as ever. 
And you just dip it a few times, you know, and gets all, washes the bag out, you know, and gets all the the coffee down. And then what I do is I drain it off, and I just take the bag, and I'll just squeeze all the essence out and let that all drain out. And that goes in a trash can. It's just that easy and that simple. Now that's a good cup of coffee. And then, of course, yeah, I like my I like my creamer. So usually I like half and half creamer, but I do use the powder too. But today all I had, I ran out of half and half yesterday, so I figured I would just use that. And then you can always everything always has a double use, right? So this is now my spoon. <laughs> Remember, learn to double task everything. If you can't use it two or three different ways or for two different purposes, throw it in the garbage. You don't need it. Learn to use something that will survive you. Good morning. But anyway, here's my cup of tonic coffee. Bon Appetit. I'll probably just get a, a bagel or something or even a maybe a, a muffin or something. I'll probably make up this morning for breakfast this morning. I have to go out for lunch anyway this morning, so if I'm gonna eat lunch, you know, especially with somebody, I usually I usually will uh, only um, only I'll skip breakfast. But I love breakfast. Breakfast is my that's my time. You know, the breakfast is always the the good meal of the day for me. I would rather I would rather skip dinner than breakfast. I mean that's how important I feel breakfast is for you. Especially as you get older, you know, the digestion seems like it works a lot better, you know, at those at that time where you're not having to fight with it because of the digestion. You know this little cup here is this is what they call the bubba cup. See it's a it's a bubba cup. Now they don't endorse me, but I tell you what, none of these products are endorsed, but you know I tell you what, this is what this is what I found to work. And it works well. So you know when I have a product that works well that I believe in, that I use. I'll tell you about it. I won't, you know, and if there's anyone out there that wants me to, you know, to test one of their products or something, hey, feel free to send me a sample. And believe me, I'll give you my best honest opinion on it. I mean, you know, and I'll do whatever I can to help you out and promote your business or whatever. But uh, as long as you do something for me that makes my life easier and better, I'm all for it. Trust me. So, um, uh, but anyway, I'm gonna sit back here and just uh, finish out my morning with uh, some meditation and just um, sort of absorb this beautiful nature around here and um, let it sink in. But in return, I'm gonna turn you around a little bit so you can sort of see what I'm looking at. Tell me if that ain't a beautiful Beautiful view. My most favorite here at this park is this just big old giant tree right here. Isn't that just not gorgeous? I mean, how could you? How could you go wrong with big beautiful trees like that? You got a sort of a roundabout view. Usually there's a few more people out here than what there has been, but today they got the the tractor out there running. You know, the tractor out here running. You know, to uh, <coughs> <coughs> he's scraping the road, <coughs> taking all the potholes away. <coughs> so for a little bit of. <coughs> noise here and there 
believe me, to save the beating on your truck. <laughs> he can scrape it all he wants, and I'll never complain. <laughs> well, God bless you guys. Hope you all have a great day. Just take care. Yeah, I cleaned her up. I saw it after I videoed it and watched it. I saw where I left the spot right there. But anyway, hey, God bless you guys. Have a great day. <laughs> Why not laugh about it, right? <laughs>